Spiritual Teaching 317 Beloved disciples, I contemplate you prepared. You have entered into spiritual recollection to reach the grace to listen and understand my word. On your way, you have had my presence, already giving you the prodigy, giving you my protection, or speaking to you through consciousness. I want to dwell in your heart to be your guide and teacher. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I tell you once again, my word is the bread that feeds your spirit. My presence brings you the desired peace. How many trials have you lived in the world? You sought peace and comfort and pleasures of the earth. And not finding them, you have returned to me to tell me, Lord, only in you do we find peace and comfort to our spirit. Israel, in this time of trouble, learn to seek me in your prayer. When the tests are greater, seek me as a luminous beacon or as the boat of salvation. Trust in me that I will lead you to a safe harbor. Everyone who seeks me, finds me. Every spirit that rises, having faith in my divinity, reaches salvation. That is why I have sent you into the world, saying to you, watch and pray for man. Because they have not listened to my word. Only the people of Israel listen to my warning teaching and preparation. And through it, I will say to humanity, Here is the deposit of your salvation. Behold the people of Israel, who is my disciple, who will go in search of you to give you my lesson, to give you the bread of eternal life, which you did not want to receive when I delivered it through human understanding. But the means I chose to manifest myself seem imperfect during this time. How many have listened to my word and, not understanding it, have strayed from the path? I will call you back. I will give you proofs of my truth, and they must believe in me. Because the seed of life and spirituality that I have sown in their hearts, it must flourish in faith. This truth will shine in them, and they will confess to their brothers that I was among men manifesting myself through human understanding. How can humanity judge my works and penetrate my inner judgments? But I have given you free will, and by virtue of those gifts, I have put him to the test. Those who have believed have won the test, have strengthened their faith, they have risen to the regions of the Spirit, nourishing themselves with the essence of my revelations. Truly I tell you, that the encounter of my spirit with yours has been in the hereafter. I have taught you to look for me rising up the ladder of prayer, and with that purity you find me in the spiritual, because in this time I have not come to humanize myself. I have only used the understanding and heart of my creatures to manifest myself through them. I have given you this book of teachings so that latter all may also know my revelations. I have repeated the lessons. I have contemplated that many have entered my work, wanting to know everything from its beginning. For this reason, I have repeated my teachings. I have told you that Elijah, the rogue Rojas, opened the third era so that you will meet the divine master on your way. Blessed is the one who listens to me with love the one who reaches me by opening his heart to receive the essence of my word, because it will reach the light, and with that wisdom, it will understand my work. It will know how to practice it after 1950, and it will be called, with justice, my disciples. I want to call everyone my disciples, but remember that the good disciple has to be faithful to the teachings by imitating his teacher. You recognize 
that your spiritual struggle is great here on earth. And your spirit makes you feel that when he enters that life that awaits him beyond this world, he will have to continue fighting to ascend. Meditating on this, you come to experience a certain sadness when considering that rest does not exist when human life ends. This sadness does not come from the spirit, but from the flesh, which is fragile and small, because its nature is not eternal and has to fear eternity. For the spirit, eternity means its greatest blessing. If you think about his enjoyment, he knows that it will have no end. And if he thinks about his restitution, he knows that he will have time to restore his thoughts and improve. Spiritual rest as understood and conceived by your matter does not exist. The rest that awaits the spirit is activity, multiplying by doing good, not wasting an instant. Then rest of the spirit is relieved of remorse and sorrow. Take pleasure in doing good, rest knowing its creator and your brothers. Truly I tell you, if I make your spirit remain inactive to rest, according to how you conceive rest on earth, the darkness of despair and anguish would seize it, because the life and the light of the spirit, as well as its greater happiness, are the work, the fight, the incessant activity. The spirit that returns from earth to the spiritual valley, bearing the fatigue of the flesh imprinted on itself, and arrives looking for the hereafter as a bed to rest, or to sink into oblivion to erase the traces of the struggle, he will have to come to feel the most miserable being and will not find peace or happiness until he wakes up from his lethargy, until he comes out of his error and rises to spiritual life, which is, as I have told you before, love, work, the continual struggle on the path that leads to perfection. Here on earth, your spirit must feel imprisoned, since in it everything is limited and temporary. Here, yes, he must tire of so much sin and so much impurity as exists in human life. But it is not a fatigue like that burdens the flesh, but a boredom of everything bad, a repulsion for everything impure, a fatigue of fighting and suffer many times for validity or unjustified causes. If from this life men had made a clean existence and had prepared their body as a room worthy of a spirit dwelling in it, then fatigue would not be known, nor would there be boredom, nor repulsion, and therefore, the disembodied spirit would not reach the spiritual world seeking rest in repulse. On the contrary, he would arrive full of strength and faith to continue his journey. That struggle that in the world he never managed to stop and that not even death left in suspense. I want the end of the fight when all my children have been reunited for eternity at their spiritual home. Participate in my infinite happiness as creator, taking into account that each one of you took part in the divine work, building or rebuilding. Only in the spiritual will you find that of all that I have created from the beginning, nothing has been lost, that in me, everything is resurrected, everything arises and is renewed. Thus, if so many beings were lost for a long time, if many, instead of doing works of life, did destructive works, they will find that the time of their confusion was fleeting and that their works, no matter how bad had been, they will have reparation and eternal life to be converted into collaborators of my created work incessantly. 
What will be a few centuries of sin and darkness like those that humanity has had on earth if they did not compare with eternity, with an endless time of evolution and peace? You walked away from me in virtue of your free will, and you will return induced by consciousness. Hard and rebellious was the flesh to follow the dictates of that inner light that you call consciousness. And it was more easy to follow the impulses that led him to the debauchery of his instincts and passions. Humanity has long traveled the path of life on this earth and full struggle between the consciousness that has never been silent and the flesh that would like to make of materialism its cult and its law, not having conquered until now neither matter nor spirit since the fight continues. Are you asking me who will win? I tell you that it does not take long for the absolute triumph of consciousness working through the spirit in the flesh. Do you not feel that after so much struggle and so much combat, the matter that is human and passing before the consciousness that is my eternal light? Understand that after such a prolonged fight, man will finally reach sensitivity and docility that he has never had before the voice and the spiritual life that vibrates and pulses within his being. Towards that point, you all march without realizing it. But when you see on earth the triumph of good and justice, you will understand the reason for the fight, the fighting and the trials. With this preparation, I want to contemplate you so that you can sow good examples on your way giving testimony of all that you have received and heard from me. When this manifestation passes, you will contemplate my teaching beyond your reach, and you will ask yourself, how is it possible that the Lord has spoken to us in our own language in this time of greater evolution of humanity? Listen, disciples, it was written from the times past that I was to come and manifest myself over all my children, and thus prepare the arrival of a time of peace among men by leading them to the practice of spirituality. This is the fulfillment of the prophecy. Today I am preparing you surrounded by the spiritual world, while in the hereafter, other spirits are awaiting my orders and will come to dwell among humanity in times to come. Among them are those who are to govern the people, those who by their great virtue will make the men fulfill my mandates, channeling them on the right path. After you, they will come. My work will grow more and more until finally all the spirits are unified in the fulfillment of my law and this abode becomes a world of perfection. Those who inhabit it at that time will feel my love in everything created, and they will prepare to inhabit a better world. This abode will be temporary for your spirit. It will go to other regions, to other planes of the hereafter, in search of its improvement. Remember that I told you, in the Father's house there are many mansions, and in this time of great evolution, in which you better understand my teachings, I have come to tell you, in the Father's house, there is an infinite number of dwellings. Therefore, do not think that when you leave this world, you will reach the maximal spiritual elevation. No, disciples, when your stage on this planet ends, I will lead you to other abodes, and thus I will guide eternally on the infinite scale of your improvement. Trust me, love me, and you will be saved. Do not stop, people. If you know the way, hasten your step. Comply with my law. Live lovingly and doing charity to your fellow man, and all the gifts that I have entrusted to you will be like lights that illuminate the path of humanity. Why do you doubt yourself 
and your father for a moment if I have told you that you are part of my spirit. Why do you doubt to possess my attributes? If you have come to this world to make up for your past faults, why do you blaspheme when you find the proof on the road? This is how I come to prepare you, disciples. This is how I come to engrave the book of my teachings in your heart. If you long for the consolation for your sorrows, seek my word in your heart, and from there it will flow like a source of crystalline waters. I am teaching you in this year, 1950, the last of my stay among you. I want you to reach spirituality as I have asked you. You have understood me and you have entered into spiritual penitence. You have loved me and from some have fallen the impure garments that covered his spirit and others I contemplate in pursuit of his purification. Do not forget that to practice my teachings you have to get rid of all materialism. I have entrusted my light to your consciousness so that guided by it you may remove all imperfections and virtues may flourish that I discover in your spirit with my word. I have created you sensitive to love and pain as well. I have told you love each other one to another so that you may feel my word in all its purity. Share your peace with your brothers. Help them to drain their cup of bitterness. Remember that I have told you, before me, you are all my children. If I allow you to evolve and in it you have your struggles, it is because I long for you to conquer your imperfections. It is time for you to begin the spiritual work that has been entrusted to you. See how the fields are unfruitful because the seed of love and charity lives hidden in the depths of your heart. I have come with my teachings to strengthen you in the good. I have been leading you along paths of love so that you reach your brothers with my message of light and consolation. If the time of my preaching has been long for you, has been so that you assimilate the content of my doctrine, and you will never mistake its meaning, because you are the new Israel, the people who will bear witness to my truth. At each step, the voice of your conscience awakens you, making you understand that you have a high destiny among humanity and a great mission to fulfill. Is it true that within you there is a force that does not let you fall and a voice that does not let you sleep? Is it true that when you get away from the road or forget about your mission, you feel a relentless that does not leave you a resting point? Well, that force, that inner light, that voice that speaks to you within is your consciousness, in which my law and your changes are inalienably written. Let yourself be gently guided by the internal guide, and truly I tell you that all spiritual restlessness will disappear, leaving in its place deep peace and true satisfaction. If you take advantage of these precious moments, you will not mourn the lost time tomorrow. You will not regret mistakes, nor will you stumble. Think that it is your good works that will have to bear witness to me. Or perhaps do you think that with imperfect works, your brother will also be able to recognize my truth? Do not forget that the tree by its fruit will have to be recognized. Do not fear to be few and small. Together with you will go an invisible army of beings of light, preparing your way, opening doors for you to pass, knocking down obstacles and overcoming obstacles. 
Against a world of darkness, you will count on the world of light to overcome the influence of war. You will count with the angel of peace against disease, plague, and death. You will have with you the charity of those invisible beings, ready to pour on humanity their balm of charity and comfort. My disciples have never been forsaken by me. They have never been abandoned by those beings that inhabit regions of light and harmony. Who inspired some of my disciples of the second era to remember the divine word of their master and write it for the inheritance of all generations? Who were leading my disciples by unknown roads to distant cities? Who freed Peter from his prison? While his jailers slept, and those who accompanied those apostles of my truth in the supreme hour of their sacrifice. The spiritual beings, your brothers, whom men have called angels. Oh, if you only knew the value that this influence has on your life, you would be more docile, more humble, and more obedient to their calls and directions but you are creatures of little faith because you would like to see with your body senses the spiritual life and since you have not achieved it you have felt disappointed in your faith truly I tell you if your faith were true you would not need to fill it with the senses of the flesh the presence of the spiritual because then it would be the spirit that will perceive with the subtle sensitivity that world that vibrates unceasingly around you. Yes, humanity, if you feel distant from the spiritual world. On the other hand, those beings cannot feel free from man since for them there are no distances, no limits, no barriers. They live within its spiritual and for the same reason, they cannot be alien to the life of human beings, whose highest destiny is that of the elevation and perfecting of their spirits. You are all brothers. All spirits have the same attributes. Your very matter has been created just like the others. Then why have you divided into classes and nations, humanity? I love you as a single son. And so I forgive you, but the thirst worthy of this grace conquer your redemption. The moment will come when meditating on my teaching, love one another inspired by my love, and you will not judge your mistakes. Advice and correct with love on your way, but do not feel superior to your brothers. Only love. Live righteously as I have taught you. Prepare yourselves because tomorrow you will be guides and teachers of humanity. In this time of which I speak, you will deliver my teachings with love as I have taught you. You will not judge your brothers harshly, believing with this you please your Lord. In truth I say to you, that even when you find yourself teaching in my name to humanity, you will not be exempt from sinning. Watch and pray. But if I contemplate you sanctioning the faults of your loveless brothers, I will speak to you through the consciousness, and I will tell you as in the second era, he who is free from sin, let him cast the first stone. My teaching is for all times. Now I repeat the lessons of the past ages so that you understand me best. Just as you hear me, my disciples of the second era listen to me. Just as you are giving the first steps in my doctrine, that is how they took them. Just as you fight to overcome your imperfections, so they fought those and finally won. Just as you doubt the gifts that I have entrusted to you, so also among those disciples there were those who, stealthily, Believing that the master was not looking at them, they put his word to the test. 
If my examples were living, the fruit of their preparation was manifested in their works. If they did not watch and pray, the prodigy did not manifest itself, and they returned to me with a doubt in the heart. But when hearing the truth of my word again, they repented of their faults, and crying, they promised not to doubt me again. Thus, I contemplate you at this time, disciples. Some of you fight caring as invincible weapons of faith, good works, and you see that my word is manifested in your fulfillment. But others of my children, without practicing my law, have tried to grant them a prodigy before humanity that identifies them as my envoys, and by not obtaining it, they have doubted the master, and I have been denied. I forgive them, because if they doubt me today, tomorrow they will believe. If today they do not accept my teaching, tomorrow they will give their own life for confessing and bearing witness to the truth of this revelation. I bless those who live in my law and those who reject it, because through the latter, when they have entered the sense of my teachings, I will give great tests to humanity, because they will be the faithful conduit for my divine spirit overflow among their brothers in virtue, truth, and love. In this way, I enjoy myself among you, disciples. In this way, the Father strengthens you for the time of trials that you will have to live. Stay attentive to the voice of consciousness, and I truly tell you that you will continue to receive my teaching, although in 1950 I finished this manifestation through the spokesperson. Listen to the consciousness and then your communion with God will be eternal and there will be nothing and no one to separate the disciple from their master. Trust in my word. Truly I say to you that all the prophecies will be fulfilled for the satisfaction of the prophets and joy of the people of Israel. Watch and pray because times are going to change. Unite yourself to my law of love, and there will be no test that stops you in the path. Live the examples that I gave you in the Messiah, and then you will come out ahead. No one will be able to silence my word in your mouth. Truly I tell you, not even the scoffer will make you forget my law, because the memory of the slain lamb will strengthen you and you will offer yourselves as a holocaust to my divinity. How many of you will abandon your loved ones to go in search of those who should hear my word through you? How many for the love of my doctrine will you strip yourselves of your material goods and live in the midst of deprivations? But if your body lacks the earthly goods in this world, I will adorn your spirit with my love and eternity. But do not fear, O oh dearly beloved children. I do not ask for the sacrifice of any of you. I only have told you in my word. Everything you do in my work, you will receive multiplied one hundredfold. So good works on your path and you will reap the fruits in the hereafter. Thus I prepare you in this dawn in which Christian humanity commemorates the passion of the Messiah. You too, disciples, you are living the ever-present sacrifice of the Messiah, and you feed on the examples of the Divine Redeemer. People of Israel, be the light of humanity. Remind him of my promise to return that I made to him through the Messiah and tell him that I have kept my word. Those prophecies have been forgotten by men, but I, through my new apostles, will remind them. Disciples, in the manifestation of my word, my father's caress 
and my peace are present. Take it, you who still inhabit the valley of tears. Drain your cup with patience, because after this bitterness, you will taste the bread and wine of my love forever. My peace be with you.